Good evening and welcome to Shiloh tonight. How's everybody doing tonight? If you're glad to be in the house, Lord, say amen. 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 If we'll just please stand to our feet tonight, stretch your legs, get our blood to flow, and be thankful to be in the house of the Lord. And so let's sing Because He Lives, We Can Face 22 with no worries at all. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and He died. just a moment and speak to him about the concerns that are on our heart. Uh, if I act like I'm a little out of sorts tonight, you'll notice Tammy's not with me. Um, and that's just a precautionary measure. She's got a sinus infection, but uh, she was running a little low-grade fever last night, so she just wanted to make sure that uh, 
all things are well. You know, we live in a new day now. We look at things differently than we ever have before. She's doing that out of love and concern for her church family tonight. But uh, So if I act like I'm, I'm only half here, you'll know why. Amen. But uh, we do appreciate you all being here tonight. And I do want to say before we go to the Lord in prayer, thank you to those of you that come out today and worked and labored and Uh, There's going to be plenty up here on the stage by Sunday, but tonight it feels a little hollow and empty after all these beautiful decorations that we've had up now for the last month. But I appreciate those that come and work today, and uh, I just really just want to express our gratitude for your help today. Amen. And uh, what 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 a joy it is to be able to serve the Lord together in whatever capacity that we're serving Him. We want to go to Him in prayer tonight as we welcome our I Church. Uh, folks with us tonight we appreciate you we celebrate you being part of our worship experience and we thank God for each of those that are in the building tonight as we look around we realize we're missing several and uh, we want to continue to remember them in prayer we know some are traveling tonight and uh, let's remember all of these tonight that are are sick and suffering and uh, we just thank God I want to say thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus uh, we had a gentleman to come by here today and and uh, bless the church uh, that Caring and Giving had been able to bless a few months back. And uh, he said, Pratt called me last night. He said, Pastor, I just want you to know uh, that I hadn't forgot, amen, and God has blessed him. And he said, I want to put it back into the ministry uh, so that it will be able to bless others. And we give God glory, honor, and praise. But without you being the hands and feet, these things are impossible. A gentleman told me, he said, I've never walked in the door of your church, but your church remembered me when we needed somebody. Somebody say praise God. It's not about us, amen. It's about lifting up the name of Jesus and blessing others. That is what he's compelled us to do, amen. And we praise God that he's chosen us to be a part of what he wants to do on planet earth, amen. We want to go to the Lord in prayer. I know many of you may have a request or a need tonight. If so, just slip up that hand. Aren't you glad you can do that in great confidence of knowing that the one that we're about to approach is able tonight able to prevail prevail over any situation that is in our lives. He's able tonight to do, the word says, exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. Oftentimes in my life, there are so many things that limit my ability to even dream as God would have me dream. But I am so thankful tonight that I serve a God that is able to go beyond the limitations of my own thought process and do an amazing thing in my life. I'm grateful to him tonight. When I took that jar of beads today off the altar, I carried them in that kitchen and they're gonna be repurposed in a different ministry. But when I set them down on that bar, it was an overwhelming expression of the gratitude in my heart for every bead that was in that jar and what God has done for Shiloh and our people this year. But I believe 2022 is going to be the best year in the history of Shiloh Church. You really believe that, Pastor? With every fiber of my being. Amen. And aren't you glad that God has you here right now at this moment in time that you're going to get to be a part of what He's going to do? I thank God for those forefathers that gathered under these trees now all those years ago. Man, I'm telling you, this is going to be the moment to be a part of this church. They visioned it. They saw what God could do and would do. They dreamed it, amen. But in those humble beginnings, they planted seeds right here that we're reaping harvest off of right now, amen. And I thank God because there's not anything I can ask him for right now that he's not able to do. If you lifted that hand and you meant it, would you just talk to him with me right now? Heavenly Father, We thank you, Lord, as we pause for just a moment and we begin this service tonight by simply saying thank you, God, for who you are. You are the provider of all things that are good, and we celebrate you here in our midst tonight. Those that have joined us in-house, our young folks next door, those that are joining us on our church right now, we pray God blessings upon each one of them. I just pray and ask tonight, God, that you do a special thing next door in our young people. I thank you for those that are there working with them, and I pray for an anointing upon them tonight to to teach your word, God, in such a way that it will impact those young people. They're not there to entertain them. They're not there to babysit them, but they're there to give them Jesus. And I thank you for that, God. 
Now, I pray you bless upon those that are joining my church. For whatever reason, maybe they're not able to be here tonight. Maybe they're traveling, maybe it's sickness, and maybe there's some that have never yet come, but they're still able to be a part of this fellowship through that means. For that tonight, we say thank you, Lord. Not only here in this building, but as we realized just this past Sunday, literally around the world, people are tuning in and viewing and seeing what God is doing here on Autry Mill Road. We give you glory and honor and praise for that. Thank you, God, for who you are. I thank you as I look around this room tonight that I see some folks that have not been able to be here in a few services. And I celebrate your blessings upon them and the grace of God in their lives. And we say thank you once again tonight for all that you have done. But tonight, once again, we're reminded that there are needs in this building because I saw many people lift up their hands. And God, we intercede on behalf of them tonight as well as those that may be typing right now in the chat box in our church. We just ask you, God, to do in their lives tonight that that only you can do. And we'll be careful, God, to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and the best it's yet to come. We give you glory and honor and praise, and we say thank you, Lord. Bless us here in this house tonight. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. As we ask all of these things in accordance with the will of God, and in Jesus' name, the church said amen and amen. Before you're seated... Turn to your neighbor, throw up that hand, let them know you're glad to see them tonight in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's good to see you all here, and you may be seated tonight as we worship the Lord together. Amen. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God.
shall be signed. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. tonight that you can say that? Amen. It is well with my soul. And the good news is, if you cannot give that report tonight, I just want you to know tonight God is only a prayer away. Amen. And you can give that report before you go home tonight. Amen. And before you finish watching this service tonight, if you are joining us through our church. I want to remind you that this coming Sunday we're kicking off a, a new series for the first four weeks of, of this new year. Uh, in praying and searching God's face for us and our direction as a church, God began to speak to our heart about our commission and our vision for the church of looking for one more and just feeling an urgency that I, I needed to um, lay some understanding, amen, of what our steps would be into 22 for Vision 22. And uh, so we're going to be looking this coming Sunday in, in our worship Worshiping God, amen, through our celebration in all the things that we do. Understanding that everything we do is about worshiping God. From the rising up to the going down, as well as the following Sunday we will be looking at loving your neighbor, being involved in the community. And the community not only includes outside the walls of this church, uh, but inside the walls of this church and part of what uh, we'll be launching out and loving one another uh, through our new experience this year. And then the third Sunday on the 14th, we're going to be looking at sharing, uh, or on the 15th, sharing the gospel through communication. You realize this is our responsibility, amen, as we look for one more, that sheep beget sheep. Amen. It's our responsibility to uh, reach out into the community and let folks know what God has done for us. Amen, Jack? That's where it begins, amen. You, you would be amazed how many people I have to come up to me and tell me, said, uh, I seen one of your members the other day in the IGA. As soon as they say the IGA, I know they're fixing to go to talking about Jack, amen. And they'll tell me how he was uh, encouraging them and how he was inviting them to church and, and how he was just loving on them. And, uh, you know, sharing that love. I, I, somebody sent me a message this week. I don't remember who it was. I had two different people to send it to me. And our own Wendy, they're, uh, they're gone to see their son. Uh, but she was in the drugstore in Clinton. <laughs> and bless her heart, she had somebody by the hands and was standing there in the drugstore praying over them. Amen. 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 That's gospel. Amen. That's sharing the love of Jesus Christ. I, mean, I tell people all the time, I said, look, you know, if you want to be able to minister, go to a place where people are hurting. The best two places I know to do that is at the hospital or the drugstore. Amen. Just go to the drugstore and walk around a few minutes. You'll find somebody that you can share the good news of Jesus Christ with. Preacher, you're crazy. I know. Write it down. I'm crazy for Jesus. Amen. I want somebody to come go with me. Amen. Don't you? Wouldn't it be wonderful when you got to heaven if you could look around, there's a bunch of people standing there that you helped get there. Yeah, it would be. It would be wonderful. That's what it would be. That's going to be our mission. Amen. And then we're going to learn to grow in Christ through cultivation. 
Because it's not only about reaching out to those in the world around us, it's about me growing. Amen? Because guys, I want to tell you something. If we're not increasing in Jesus, the devil is coming. man stood on these doorsteps today, and these are the words he said to me. He said, Pastor, I appreciate what you're doing. He said, and I thank you for doing what you're doing. He said, because I want to tell you something. For every word of encouragement that you're giving people, there's somebody else coming along giving them a word of discouragement. Just let that sink in for just a moment. And guys, I want to tell you something. The discourager, he's not giving up. I don't think the church ought to give up either. Amen and amen. That's good preaching right there. I ain't even started, but thank you. Amen. Let's stand together tonight and God's, invite God's presence here in this building. And we want to just say to him, Lord, now we're about to come into your word. We talked about it Sunday morning. We do that by asking him what Ezekiel said to ask him, calling him. And the word declares that he will show you things, not just simple things, but great and mighty things that you do not yet know, that have not yet been revealed to you. Right here in the house of God tonight, we want the Lord and the Holy Spirit to do just that. Amen? We want Him to do a thing in our lives tonight. And I believe we've got to give God access to do those things. Amen? Heavenly Father, here we are. We're hungry for You, and we desire a move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We're Pentecostals, and we enjoy the shout, and we enjoy raising hands. We enjoy worship. But God, none of that will ever take the place of the Word of God that is manifested through the anointing of the Holy Spirit in each of our lives. I pray tonight, God, that you cultivate something in our lives tonight to help us grow, to help us become stronger, to help us realize some things, maybe, God, that we had forgotten or maybe we'd never even known. We ask these things of you tonight, God, according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. And as well, God, we give you access to our own hearts. And we invite those, God, that are joining us through our church to do the same. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you're seated, look up to heaven and say to him, Lord, you have access. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Three reasons why we should pray. That's kind of a foolish thing to even be talking about, wouldn't you think? Here we are closing out one year and we've seen the manifestation of God's blessings and how God has implanted within our hearts that this place was to be called a house of prayer. And if this place was going to be a house of prayer, then it was going to mean that there had to be some people in this place uh, that were going to become praying people. Amen. Our ladies have done that uh, every Wednesday throughout the year. And oh, I just enjoy watching my wife as she comes home on Wednesday. And the glow on her face after she's left this place in fellowship with many of you other ladies as you have learned together. And all during the time I hear her talking about uh, the encounter she has had with God at her place of prayer and how she has learned through this Bible study on prayer, uh, amen, how to manifest. And it's kind of interesting because yesterday we, I had a conversation with a person uptown. Well, when I got home, I was sharing with my wife about a prayer request uh, that needed to be uh, dealt with. And I said, matter of fact, we kind of were joking about it. I said, you know, he said for you to bring your bottle of oil and come on and just pour it out. And she smiled and she laughed and she said, but here's the thing. We all can touch God. Amen, church? I just want you to understand tonight, and if I can equip you with anything when you go out of this building, I appreciate you sending me a message. I appreciate you calling me and asking me to join you in prayer. But guys, I just want to tell you tonight, you can touch the hem of His garment. Amen? I'm just going to be honest with you. I know a lot of praying people. Brother Chris, I don't know anybody I trust their prayer any more than I do my prayer. That sounds kind of boastful. No, I know the guy that I'm talking to, and his name is Jesus. I know what Jesus has done in my life. I know where he has brought me from. I know the transition that has taken place in my life when I begin to allow the Holy Spirit access in my life to do a new thing in me. I know where God has brought me from. I know the times that I've laid before God and I've heard Him speak to me and I've watched the hand of God move in my own life. I know what my God can do. I appreciate your prayers. I celebrate your prayers. And uh, matter of fact, my daddy, I guess his favorite song in all the world was, I need the prayers of those that I love. Amen. I covet your prayers. I love your prayers. But guys, I just want to tell you something. I'm not depending on your prayer. Amen. 
because I want to pray for myself. Amen. I want to know that I can get in touch with God for my own self. And I want to equip the body of Christ, amen, that every one of you know that when you walk out of this room that you can touch God on your own behalf. Amen. That if you're standing in need of something, that you're able to have an encounter through the Holy Spirit with the great I Am and summons Him. <laughs> oh, I felt that right there when I said it. Amen. And I don't mean that through any disrespect. I mean it literally by what He said. Because He said, when you call unto me, I will answer. Amen. And then he went on and he said some other things like, if you don't call on me, <laughs> you need not expect anything. Amen? Amen. What are you talking about, preacher? I never read that. Well, then go back and read it again because here's what it said. He said, if you ask not, you have not. Now, I don't know how y'all interpret that, but I know how I interpret it here in Sampson County. If I don't call on him, I need to expect anything. Amen? But I believe tonight that when God said I could come boldly into the throne room of grace, that I can come there with great expectation that when I speak to Him, amen, I have His attention, amen. And He is able not only to hear what I have to say, but He is able to do that that I ask of Him to do. You see, most people agree that praying is good. We need to pray because we need something beyond ourselves. You can actually see a need to pray all around us, making it obvious why we should pray. Look at the rise in popularity in meditation. People are acknowledging that they need peace and that they need God, but they may not look or they may not know that God is what they are really looking for. Meditation is different when we are actually focusing on God. Yes, 85% of people confronting a major illness, they pray. Why? They feel that their sickness is out of their control and they feel a need for God. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I just want to tell you one of the greatest ways you'll know that you're having an influence in the workplace is when people got sick folk and their family and they come up to you and say, hey, will you pray for me? Oh, that's one of the greatest compliments that anybody could ever give you when they say, hey, will you pray for me? You see, over 50% of all doctor visits in America are prompted by high blood pressure, depression, ulcers, and migraines. All of these can in large part be alleviated by prayer. Prayer can increase our level of dopamine, which is responsible for a joy and calmness. Prayer can even boost your immune system. I didn't say this, amen. The American Health Society said it, amen. Do you realize a smile on your face and a compliment can live someone's day? Amen. All right, let me just make sure we're understanding this tonight. Have you ever got up one morning and you just really didn't feel all that good? It didn't feel like things were going all that great, but you just pushed on through because that's who we are. And then you show up at the office or at the grocery store or at the workplace or wherever it is you're going that day, schoolroom, classroom, whatever it is, and you walk in and about the first or second person that comes up to you, they look at you and they say these words, are you feeling okay today? And now all of a sudden, that that you had had an inclination of takes on re a reality and an authority over your life. Well, in the next 30 minutes, a couple of things is going to happen. All of a sudden, you're going to start responding in the way uh, that you're feeling. And all of a sudden, instead of a smile on your face, there's going to come an ache in your heart. And all of a sudden, you're going to start... Anybody ever done that? Somebody look at you and say, you feeling all right? And the next response is, oh, Lord, have I got a fever? And it's amazing to me how you can be walking around perfectly healthy. <laughs> And then all of a sudden somebody says, you don't look like you feel all that good. Well, you know, come to think of it, I ain't been. And then the next thing you know, are you sure you're all right? And the next thing you're doing, you're patting your own self on the head trying to see if you got a fever. Well, guys, I want to tell you something. If you leave your hand on your forehead long enough, it'll get warm. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is what God said. And what God said is, I've given you power and authority, amen, to declare some things over your life. He said, I give you power in your tongue to declare a thing. Now, what I've given you power to declare is blessings 
or curses. Are you hearing me, church? I just want you to understand tonight. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking, look, now if you're sick, don't lie. You know, the Bible said, thou shalt not lie. If you're sick and somebody looks at you and says, hey, are you sick? Don't stand there saying, I feel the best I've ever felt in my life. Because they can look at you and tell you're lying, okay? <laughs> because, you know, the flesh, it manifests itself, amen. But then on the other hand, guys, I want to tell you something. We need to choose how this day is going to be. Because the Bible said, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we are to rejoice and be glad in it. You know the reason why I believe God told us to do that? Because he knew there were going to be days we got up and we just didn't have it all together. But we need to take note of the fact that this day is a day that my God hath made, and therefore I need to dictate some things over this day. And you realize even when you're not feeling your best, if you begin to glorify and praise God and magnify the blessings of God in your life and focus on that that is good in your life, God can manifest Himself in a true and real way as you begin to praise and worship Him through the provision that He has made when He said, If you worship me... <laughs> I will come to you. Amen. I'm going to manifest myself in your presence, amen, as you begin to glorify me and we will see the hand of God in our lives. You see, God has given us authority. So the question is, why do we pray? We pray because it is how we communicate with God. And while we may feel insecure asking what can feel like an elementary question, even Jesus' disciples had to ask for themselves. One day, listen, according to Luke 11 and 1, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Amen. You see, there's nothing more important in life than to learn how to pray. Prayer is the most important thing that we can learn and we need to learn how to do it. Prayer is where we learn to talk to God, understand Him, connect with Him, and understand ourselves. I think I said it this past Sunday morning. If it wasn't Sunday morning, it was last Wednesday night. I don't talk to my friends in King James. Um, I, I don't. I, I don't have those kind of conversations. And I, I know maybe some, some people do. Uh, but when I talk to my friends, I talk to my friends just like I talk to my friends. And I have a normal conversation with them. And uh, I, I made a statement one time in the presence of God, and I said, you know, that guy. And uh, that guy said, don't, that I was sharing that with, he said, ain't that a little disrespectful? And I said, I don't really know that I understand what you're talking about. He said, well, you just referred to Jesus Christ as that guy. And I said, well, let me clarify something for you. That guy, Jesus, we're talking about, he said, let me tell you what he said. He said that he was a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I said, now, I've had some pretty harsh things to say to my brother, but he ain't never walked off from me and denounced that he was no longer part of my family. Amen. So I, don't, I believe that my Lord and Savior is big enough. I believe he's got big boy enough pants to put on that I can refer to him as my bro if I need to. Amen. Guys, I just want to tell you, there comes a time in our life, and I believe part of our relationship and learning and growing with God is to get, to, to get Jesus uh, down to a place <laughs> where I'm walking. Because that's exactly what he said he would do. He said, I'll go with you. He said, Eddie, I'm going to go with you to the ends of this earth. So if I open my eyes in the pits of hell, in my understanding, now I don't know about you, there been a few days in my life when I felt like I was at the pits of hell. Amen? Man, y'all folks are too sanctified for me to even talk to y'all. Let me come over here and talk to these people on this side of the room. There's been a few days in my life when I didn't have it all together spiritually. Amen? There have been some times in my life when I had questions that I didn't have answers for. But I want you to understand tonight that that God that I serve and His only begotten Son is able to handle my uncertainties. Amen? 
and He still loves me, and He still cares for me, and He still has understanding for me, even when I don't understand what He's doing. And as frequent as on the way over here tonight, because I didn't have Tammy sitting in the car to keep me straight, this guy, I come around the curve on Carroll Store Road. I don't know if y'all been down it lately, but it's a pretty curvy road. I come around this curve, you know, making on my speed limits, you know. And, um, uh, um, yeah. And uh, when I come around that curve, there's this car in front of me running just about 10 mile an hour. I, I literally had to slam on brakes. Well, I don't appreciate that. I, I don't. As a man, I, that bothers me. I mean, there's a speed limit on the road, and it's posted. You're supposed to run that speed limit plus five or minus five. Get in that speed limit zone, okay? And at any rate, I'm going here, and this guy is just poking. And I'm, I'm a law-abiding citizen, so I, I'm not going to fire my, my weapon. And, and I'm, I, I want to stay alive, so I'm not going to honk my horn for Jesus. And, um, but I'm having my own little scenario going on inside of me, like, why don't you go ahead? I'm trying to get to church in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and finally, he decides he will get off the road. And so I go on by, and I get almost out to the end of Carroll Store Road, and I see him, this deer, coming full speed, and never slowed down, and went right across that highway. And the Holy Spirit said, how you like me now? You see, before I ever crawled out of bed this morning, you know what I asked my friend, that guy Jesus I'm talking about? I said, hey, how about directing my steps today? How about keeping me from danger and harm today? More importantly, God, I want you to position me in a place of blessings today so I can find favor in your eyes where I can be a blessing. Put me wherever you need me. And the minute he slows me down to 10 mile an hour, I'm mad. Come on now. And here we are. I'm looking at this deer pounce across the road and I'm looking at my speed limit now at what it is and it's far higher than that 10 mile an hour that I was running and all of a sudden it hits me, God, if I'd have come on at my speed, I would have probably been right in the path of what you were keeping me from. That's how real my God is. Because when I ask him to do something, he'll do it in spite of me. And he'll do it while I'm belly aching about him doing it. Amen. There ain't many of us men in this room tonight, but how many times has your wife brought you a glass of drink and you thought to yourself, why didn't you put some ice in it? Amen. Come on now. I mean, it works on every avenue of our lives. Amen. Because we're imperfect people striving to be like a perfect God. Amen. But in this real relationship that I'm walking in and I'm talking in, hey man, I must understand the importance of my prayer and know that my God is able to bless me in spite of me. You see, why is it important to pray? Because prayer gives us the untapped power. It unlocks, it ignites, it heals, it transforms, it empowers, and it comes. The following are five compelling and inspiring reasons why we should pray. First off, Prayer attracts God. And secondly, prayer motivates angels. And prayer, it attacks demons. Let's just begin right here. You see, prayer, it attracts God. Let's begin there. Let's go to Psalm chapter 66, verse 16 through 20. It says, come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Look at verse 17. It says, I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. Look at verse 18. It says, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Amen. Amen. You know why? Because God said that we are to abstain from the very appearance of evil. But I want you to go back and look at that word. Back up and hit that last one again. It said, if I had cherished. You know what that word cherished means? I did a little research on it today, and it, one of the root texts of it is to cleave to. Now, when I read that, it really opened my eyes 
So what God is really saying here, without me taking away or adding to His Word, I just want to bring some clarity here to what's being said. He said, if I cling to sin in my heart. Didn't say... <laughs> if I have sin in my heart, because the Bible said all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Let's establish some guidelines and, and parameters in the way that the Holy Spirit works in our lives. Guys, if you think you're ever going to live good enough to go to heaven, you need to figure out a different way. Because God already said there is no other way other than through and by His only begotten Son. The only way you go into heaven is have a friendship with Jesus. You're going to have to be in relationship with Him. That's it. You're never going to live good enough to go to heaven. Now we're striving to be more like Him. We're praying and asking God that we may decrease, that He may increase in us. Amen. But guys, I want to tell you, prayer, it attracts God. Amen. Let's look at verse 19. Now that we understand this. It said, But God hath surely listened and heard my prayer. Now, guys, if you don't believe God is listening to you, why are you praying? One of my favorite things is, is people that declare that they don't believe there is a God, but when they get in trouble, they call you and say, hey, will you pray for me? I, sometimes just me in the flesh, I want to say, well, I don't think you uh, believe in God. <laughs> but that's not the time nor the opportunity, amen. Now, here's the time and the opportunity. The time and the opportunity is when they ask you to pray, pray. Amen. And pull your heart out before God, before them, amen, in such a way where God can manifest, amen, His self in their lives, amen. You know, because we go back to scenarios all through the Word, and sometimes, you know, we have a child that's sick, and, and we say, well, wonder what this child, you know, wonder what this child's done, wonder what this family's done. And, and God said, oh, they've not done anything. This is just so God can be glorified, amen. Guys, I want to tell you something. Some of the things that you may be going through right now, some of you right now in this room may be in a tough place, and it could be that you're going through that so God can be glorified. So God can manifest His self in your life in such a way. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Three weeks ago, I believe it was, I told you about Tammy calling me and taking us out there to the warehouse and anointing it with oil. You can still see them two dots on the front of my warehouse. Well, guess how many cakes I got coming tonight? 1,165. In three weeks, we've gone from 600 to 1,100. That don't count the 80 that I drove to Fable yesterday and got, that they called and said, hey, we got some more cakes up here. You want them? I said, I'm on the way. <laughs> he said, you sure? You ain't got to come get them. I said, hey, God doesn't say he's going to bless me. I'm going to get them. Amen. Justin looked at me tonight. He said, Daddy, he said, I ain't going to believe this. He said, you're just not going to believe this. He said, evidently... <laughs> We're doing something right. I said, are we now? He said, Daddy, I've looked at that app, and he said, I see people that's ordered 1,200 cases, and they're getting 200. Unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above and beyond that that you can think or imagine. Guys, what I'm trying to tell you is tonight, don't pray if you're not going to believe God's going to do what you're asking him to do. Amen? Amen? And, and I want to encourage you to step out on faith and pray some bold prayers. Amen. Ask God for some things that are impossible because the Word declares that He is able to do the impossible. Amen. What if He don't answer? I want to tell you, He's the great I Am. I don't have to prove Him. You got to remember, I'm the same guy when God first called me to preach. I'd go to the hospital and I'd pray and they'd die. Y'all remember me telling you that story? And y'all all in this room pretty much know Aunt Margaret? Y'all remember what Aunt Margaret said to me? Son, if I get sick, don't come pray for me. And I'm thinking, Aunt Margaret, I needed encouragement, amen. <laughs> amen. But guys, I want to tell you something. I don't have to prove God. He's already proven Himself. Over and over and over again. I can go on and ask him for whatever I asked him for. Same way a month ago I stood at May's uh, foot of her bed and said, Now, May, how are things? Are you ready to go? Yes, preacher, I'm ready. If I go, it's great joy. Amen. I said, Well, how do you feel about staying? Her first response was, Well, this world's kind of in a mess. I'm about ready to go with her. And she said, But I got some grandbabies I love. 
I said, so I want to understand before I pray. Because, I, guys, I'm serious. I believe God will do what I asked him to do. You want me to pray for you to go? You want me to pray for you to stay? How do you want me to pray? I want to know. Amen? You come to me and say, look, my, ki- my child's lost. I want to know how you want me to pray. Because I believe if I pray, God's going to bend their knee. Amen? I believe that. Now, it may take some serious things in their life to cause them to bend their knee. It may not be a word of testimony that bends their knee. It could be an unthinkable thing. How do you want me to pray? Amen? I believe every one of us in this room ought to be that serious about talking to our Heavenly Father. Amen? Because I believe whatsoever we ask in His name, amen, He's just apt to do it. Amen? Now, i got enough sense to always pray, say, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. And that's exactly what I did over May. I said, God, this is what I'm desiring. I'm desiring you bring her home. I'm desiring to God that you'll give her a few more days with her grandkids. She can be able to love them and enjoy them. I'm desiring God that she'll be able to walk back in Shiloh Church again. Well, this past Sunday morning, she walked in this church with her grandbabies, amen. (laughs) And the doctor said she ain't going to make it through tonight. Guys, I want to tell you, when you talk to God, you better believe what you're asking Him for, and you better know that He is able to do what you asked Him to do. And my greatest thanksgiving tonight is that God is not limited, amen, by my thought process. He is able not only to do what I asked Him, but exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. (laughs) <laughs> that's who you're serving tonight. Amen. Well, preacher, why is it when I pray things get worse? Maybe it's because God's needing to be glorified. Amen. He's trying to get your attention to get you to a place, amen, where he can bless you. Amen, preacher. Amen. Why? Because prayer, you see, prayer, a prayer, it attracts God. Amen. Let's look at verse 20. Amen. Praise be to God. I have got to hurry tonight. It says, praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer, or withheld his love from me. (laughs) Amen. Are y'all sopping this up with a biscuit tonight? Because it's that good, amen. You see, when we deal with our sin and our heart, God listens to our prayer and acts on our behalf. Leaving things unresolved makes it difficult for us to be honest, let down, and vulnerable, causing our prayer to be distracted or not genuine. Amen? You see, prayer is a perfect opportunity to explore our heart, share everything with God, and begin relieving ourselves of guilt and other emotions that may weigh us down. Doing this will attract God and allow Him to work in our lives. What sin do you need to start praying about so you don't stay guilty? What would it look like for you to cry out in prayer to God? And then secondly, prayer moves angels. Let me make sure we got this straight tonight. Because you see, when we begin to look at what Daniel said in chapter 9, verses 20 to 23, let's look right there quick together. It says, while I was speaking and praying, confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and making my request to the Lord, my God, for His holy heal. Look at verse 21. He said, while I was still praying... Gabriel, the man I had seen in the earlier vision, came to me in swift flight about the time of the evening sacrifice. Look at verse 22. And he says, he instructed me and said to me, Daniel, I have now come to give you insight and understanding. How about that? While he was yet speaking to God. Amen. Look at what it said in verse 23. And as soon as you began to pray, a word went out, which I have come to tell you, for you are highly esteemed. Therefore, consider the word and understand the vision. Amen. I don't know what this has got to do with anything. I really don't. I don't understand it. I I, I, I just don't get it. But I do know that they watch on church sometimes. So I have a friend that I actually grew up with in my home church. Now, I don't know how many years ago now, probably 40 plus, 50 years ago. And it said these words. I got this from her today. Matter of fact, she stays about four or five states away. And she sent me this. So I dreamed that I dreamed. Laugh out loud. Seriously. The last time that I think I heard anything from this woman, she was sending me a message. And it's been several years ago. Want me to pray for her son because he was addicted to drugs. And guess who was setting up tents out there with you? at prayer with Doug Small, her boy. That's who God is. 
She said, so I dreamed that I dreamed, laugh out loud, seriously though, I dreamed that rabbit on Alice in Wonderland holding the watch, always in a hurry, and you told me something like we needed to hurry. I can't remember your exact words, but pretty much like we needed to get it together quickly. I just wanted to share this with you because it was you that told me what the dream was about. I thought it was odd and I never saw you, just that Eddie Smith said, laugh out loud, and I hope you don't think I'm crazy. I don't think she's crazy because this is what I do know. I know that my God is at work when I'm asleep. I know that my God is using me for the upbuilding of His kingdom because I have been called out and set apart. But guys, I want to tell you, every one of you in this room have been. You know who called you? He did. Because the Bible says, don't miss this, you could not have come to Him unless the Spirit drawed you. Oh my God. And when he summons you to come to him, he anointed you. Because the Bible said when he saved you, he gave, go read it, he gave you the power to be called the sons of God. <laughs> and through that relationship, you have the ability, the word said, to cry, Abba, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You see, prayer, it moves angels. It moves angels. You see, prayer, it ignites an angelic action on your behalf. This is a concept that can be difficult for us to grasp if we are out of practice seeing the world through a spiritual lens. The fact of the matter is that the Bible talks about spiritual battles taking place on a daily basis, and it's our choice if we want to start believing that our prayer creates activity in a spiritual realm and influences physical realm. Do you believe your prayer has a spiritual impact, and how do you need God's help right now? Amen. Amen. She ain't here, so I'll talk about her. Wendy. I walked in, it's been, how long has she been coming here? Y'all tell me, I don't know, it's been several years now. I walked into a uh, wedding, I had helped do a wedding that day. I walked in after the wedding to the reception. I'm looking around the room trying to find a place to sit down. Not everybody wants to sit with the preacher. I'm sorry, they don't. I don't know why, but they don't. Maybe I embarrass them. But I looked around and there was Bruce Butler. And Tammy grew up with Bruce. And she said, well, Bruce won't kick us out. So we go over there and sit down with Bruce. Wonderful invitation. We just began to talk a little bit. And I began to share a little bit about my heart and what God was doing. And uh, tears began to roll down Wendy's face. Wendy couldn't even talk. And Bruce said, well, we, we really are looking at church. Anybody listening? God works, the Bible said, in strange and mysterious ways. And they went on to tell me, well, next Sunday we're going to be out of place. This is Bruce and Wendy now. Been, what, five, six years ago? I don't know how long. Next Sunday we're going to be out of place because we've already planned to go on this trip. And But the following Sunday we may see you. Well, do you know how many times I, as a pastor, have been told that in the last 12 years? <laughs> uh, you ain't got that many toes. So the following Sunday, they walked in this building or that building. And they've been coming ever since. God has appointments. Amen. God has timing. I'll never forget that time I pulled up over here. God said, go to Shiloh. And I'm thinking to myself, I go to Shiloh all the time. Lord, I don't want to go today. Go to Shiloh. We were building this building. I pulled up. And I was troubled about some things. I was troubled. What I was troubled about, there had been some people here that had really been helping us. And I mean, they were blessing us. And all of a sudden, now they're gone. I don't know. She says, Lydia, you've been there. You know what that's like. And I'm like, well, God, what's going on here? You know, I'm examining my call. And I'm examining everything there is to examine. Amen. And I pull up on the property. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm here. I I've come. What do you want me to do? I'm just, I'm almost angry with God. Like, I just don't understand what's going on. And God said, open your eyes. And I'm sitting there thinking, my eyes are open. How many of y'all know sometimes you got your eyes open and you ain't looking? Amen. 
but I opened my eyes, and what I saw was scaffolding set up over here on this, around this building. And God began to talk to him. He said, you see, son? He said, that scaffolding over there, it ain't going to stay here. But that scaffolding, it's an important part of this building. Because without that scaffolding, that building will never go up. But it's not going to stay here. But it's here for a season. Somebody said to me not too long ago, said if everybody that had come through Shiloh in the last 12 years, if they were still here, this building wouldn't hold them. I don't think they meant that as a compliment. <laughs> I really don't. But what we've got to understand, guys, sometimes God bringing things to us and sometimes God bringing things away from us. When you talk to God, you've got to trust Him. And you've got to trust him that he is working on your behalf. Why? Because of Romans 8 28. All things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. <coughs> Wait a minute, preacher. This ain't good what's happening to me. I didn't say everything that happened to you would be good, and God didn't either. But he said, I'll turn it for your good. You believe God? You're going you're gonna to believe God or you're going to believe man? Let me close this down. I've got to land this plane. Prayer, it attacks demons. Let's look at verse 10. It says, finally, finally be strong in the Lord and in the power and His mighty power. You see, when we talk to God, we're just not talking to somebody that can get us through. We're talking to somebody that's not only able to do exceedingly and abundantly, but above and beyond. Amen? So he says to us in verse 11, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Because guys, I want to tell you the devil's scheming against you. The word said he lies in wait. Okay? He's seeking whom he may devour. Sometimes God allows him access to you to grow you. But my job is not to question that, but to put on the full armor of God. That's what I got to do. I got to put it on. Just like I put on this jacket tonight, I got to put on the full armor of God. Why? So that I can take my stand against the devil. And you know what God told me? He said, when you've done all you know to stand, stand therefore. What he said. Let's look at verse 12. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers and against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. You see that guy that you're fighting with? That ain't your problem. That guy in the mirror looking back at you, he really ain't even your problem. Your problem is there are demonic forces that are set against you. Amen? That's where your struggle is at. But don't you look at what verse 13 said. It said, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, you just stand. You know why? Because you've already talked to the God that is going to make a way of escape for you. That's what he has declared. As we close tonight, may I remind you, prayer is a weapon that attacks and defeats the spiritual forces of evil. We weren't meant to live our Christian lives on, on the defense. You see, the armor of God offers protection, but it also allows us to take our stand and to fight back against the dark spiritual Forces. I walked in this room tonight. Most of y'all know Sister Lydia and Brother McGill, they've been uh, a little under the weather, been battling some things. Not only physically, but emotional things that we were all praying about, hoping for a different outcome. I think she shared five, five close friends that they had lost in this season. When I walked in this room tonight, somebody said to me, said, Hey, did you hear what Pastor Lydia? 
you hear her message last night? And I said, no, I hadn't got a chance to watch it. And they said, man, she was on fire. And you're about 30 minutes there on. <laughs> you know what she done? She took her stand. Guys, sometimes when you're going through some stuff, you just got to take your stand. Just got to take your stand. And you just got to say, God, I don't understand it. But I trust you. Will you stand to your feet? If I haven't done anything else tonight, I hope I've convinced you that you, you can. You can talk to him. You can trust him. If you're born again tonight, he's your father. He's able, when you don't even understand what's going on, to bless you. What powers of dark world do you see manifesting in your life? How much do you pray for God to help you stand your ground against temptation, sin, and so much more? I want to leave you right here tonight, but where I want to leave you is in the presence of God. And I want to leave you there to remind you that, hey, He's able. And you can trust Him enough to talk to Him however you feel. It's okay. I just want to tell you it's okay. Because I really don't believe you're going to ask him many more things than I've asked him. I don't believe you're going to embarrass yourself in his presence much more than I already have. But I always hear him echo in the back of my spirit. I will in no wise cast you out. It's all right to come into Him. If you're going anywhere else, you're headed in the wrong direction. Can I just invite you tonight to embrace the love of God enough to come to Him boldly and just talk to Him? That's what prayer is. It's communication with God. Sometimes you need to speak. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm learning this more and more. You just need to listen. it's going to be really hard for him to show you great and mighty things that you do not yet know if you're still talking. Sometimes you've got to unload yourself on him and then you just need to sit there and listen to what he has to say. Heavenly Father, I love these people that are before me, those that have joined us through our church. I love them. And all I want to do is help them be able to walk closer to you not just when they walk in this building, but when they go through those doors out into this dark world where the devil is lurking, waiting whom he may devour. But I know you have great plans for them. I pray your blessings upon them. If there's one under the sound of my voice in this church or through our church that do not know you, I pray right now, God, that they'll trust you enough to pray that sinner's prayer and repent. Confess their sins and acknowledge you as their Savior. It's just that simple. It's not anything magical that we say. We just say, hey, Lord, I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I believe you're Him. He'll come and He'll make His abode with us. And He'll give us a life. Not only a life for eternity, but a life now. God, there are others of us in this room that many times it feels like we're fighting the world. I've said that so many times. God, I feel like it's me against the world. And God kind of smiles and says, no, son, it's me and you against the world. But I got you. And I just want everybody in this room tonight to know that God's got them because He's no respecter of persons. Whatever they're going through, whatever they're facing, I want them to know God has got them. Let's leave it right there, Lord, because that's where it needs to be. Add your blessings to everything that's been said. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Hope to see you Sunday. Thank you for being here. Invite somebody to come with you.